Thank you, parables. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this convo titled, Why We Sing. It is a convocation that celebrates the long musical traditions at Goshen College and invites you all into full participation today in music making. As I was preparing for this convo with Marsha Yost, I was thinking about how when we're getting to know someone, we often ask the question, so what kind of music do you like? We never ask, do you like music? There's always this underlying assumption that everybody has some kind of music that speaks to them in some way, right? And yet sometimes when we're in spaces like this, in chapels and convocations, we can feel sometimes like the music here isn't for all. It's just for some. It's for the choir folks who made it into the choirs or the kids who grew up going to church, or the folks who know how to harmonize. But it is the goal of those who lead chapels and convocations to keep expanding the kind of music that we make and that we hear in this space. We wanna keep creating opportunities for people to participate, to understand what we're doing when we sing and why we're doing it to stop worrying about whether you're good or right, and maybe, just maybe, catch a little bit of the joy of making good sound together. So today, we are gonna take some time to learn the harmonies in the alma mater, instead of just assuming y'all will eventually pick it up on your own. We're gonna hear a short reflection from history professor Philip Gullner on that line in the alma mater, Goshen College ever singing. Students Asia Adkins and Victor Vegas are going to share briefly on why they make music and they will each lead a song that they've selected. And then Marsha Yost and Parables will close us out. But just a few logistical notes. When you're asked to stand and sing or turn to a particular page in the hymn book, sometimes there's this conversation that erupts in those moments. I'd like to invite you to try to hold those transitions silently and respectfully. At the same time, I realize that sometimes up front, we say something like, turn to page 55, and you look down and you see four different books. So some of that conversation probably is, um, which page 55? So we're gonna try to be better up front about saying which book to look in. If someone doesn't say which hymn book to pull out, they probably mean that purple book titled Voices Together. That's the most recent of the Mennonite hymnals and the one that we've been tending to use. So if you don't hear the name of a book, assume it's that one. If you open up to a song and you see four parts written out and you don't read music and you don't know what you're supposed to do with that, it is fine to just listen try to pick up the melody. Anybody can always sing the melody no matter how high or low your voice is. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Scott who will do a little bit of teaching and leading and Philip who will do a little bit of reflecting. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for that intro parables and also that great intro, Suzanne. I'm Scott Hostetler, professor of music here at Goshen College. I mostly teach voice and choir and then teach some courses as well. So we're going to remind ourselves of what we did that very first convo when we learned our dear alma mater. The alma mater is the song of the college you went to. And soon, hopefully in four years, you first years uh, will graduate and you will refer to Goshen College as your alma mater. Also, alma mater is the name for the song from that said school. So that's what we're going to look at right now and review. And all of you know that melody to that, um, the, those verses that we did. There's a spot in Indiana. Hopefully you sang that with great vigor at the soccer games. Um, and will in the future. And so now we're going to turn to that chorus, which we kind of brushed over, Goshen College ever singing. So it's up there already, thank you. 
So like um, Suzanne said, there, there's some music. There's a little bit of teaching here I'm going to do. The very top line, those are those notes, those black things with the stems going up really high. That's the soprano part. And that's also the melody. And that's what we're going to learn right now. So sit on the front half of your pew. We don't have to stand quite yet. And that's just because if we sit at the back of our pew, it doesn't create wonderful posture for singing. So, And again, we don't need to talk about moving forward. We'll just move forward quietly. So remember that melody there on the top? Now you can go Goshen College like me, or you can go Goshen College if you sing pretty low, or you can go Goshen College if you sing an octave higher. Any one of those, all right? Sitting tall. I'll sing a line. We're just getting a little loud here. It's okay. You're nervous, some of you. Let's just take a deep breath in through our nose. Here we go, together. And out through your mouth. I'll sing a line, then you sing a line, okay? Goshen College ever singing. Goshen College ever singing. To our motto we'll be true. Those are the notes that everybody screws up, okay? To our ma. To our ma. To our motto will be true. To our motto will be true. Honor to our master bringing. Honor to our master bringing. Alma mater, we love you. Alma maters are usually very old, and sometimes they have very, very old language in it, right? Like the word master. I would like you to maybe conjure up a different word in your head, even though we'll stick to the original master as we're singing it. Maybe think creator. We're singing about God here, the source of our lives, okay? So let's do it all together. Goshen College, that melody part. Ready? And Goshen College. Perhaps when you're sitting and you're listening to Ariana Grande, or, or maybe you did that 10 years ago, who knows, you were singing along and you said, hmm, that feels good in my voice. I like Ariana's pitches, the level that she sings. Well, this is parts for you then. This is the soprano part, okay? So sopranos, just sopranos, or those who would like to be sopranos, Goshen College, sing heartily, okay, as Ariana would do. Ready and go. Ocean calling, shall I sing? To our heart will be true. Honor to our master bringing. Alma mater, we love you. I see some guys over there snickering. Yes, yes, you can sing up there too if you, if you want to. Right? Please only do so if you actually sound pretty good. You might have a different part, okay? Even if you don't sound good, you can still sing. It's like easy parables. All right. Going on to the alto line. The next line down, okay? Goshen College. You see how those notes go down and the stems go down. Those stems are to help you know that you're singing that second line, the alto line, okay? Let's all sing that together. I'll sing a line, you sing a line. I'll sing in my, my normal range. Goshen College ever singing. Your turn. Goshen College ever singing. Probably bass is you want to sing at, at my pitch level because it's going to get a little low, okay? To our motto will be true. To our motto will be true. 
honor to our master bringing. Honor to our master bringing. Alma mater, we love you. So perhaps you listen to Rihanna and you're singing along to Rihanna or you're listening to the great Adele and you're like, hmm, those pitches feel good in my voice. This is for you. This is your part. Goshen College. So altos, let's sing nice and strong here if you consider yourself an alto. Goshen College. Ready and uh, go. Goshen College ever seen to our mind. So we'll be true, honor to our master bringing, alma mater, we love you. That was so lovely. Now, we get to the tenor part, the tenor part, okay? Let's all sing the tenor part together. That's that next line down, if you're looking with the funny looking sort of, um, Oh, what would we call that? Kind of a bracket there with two dots next to it. That's the bass clef. It's that line with the notes going up. And this part gets a little boring. I apologize, okay? But let's all sing together in whatever octave works for you. I'm going to sing a line, then you sing a line. Goshen College ever singing. Goshen College ever singing. To our motto we'll be true. <laughs> Now it gets a little more interesting. Follow those notes. Honor to our master bringing. Honor to our master bringing. Alma mater, we love you. Perhaps, like most of us, you love the late, great Michael Jackson. Or perhaps you listen to Bruno Mars excessively. And as you sing along to Bruno and Michael, you can hit most of the notes. Probably not all, because they sing pretty high. If that is more your voice, this is your turn. Okay, tenors, here we go. Hmm. This part is not that high, actually. So whoever wants to sing that part there. Hmm. Tenors, ready, and go. Honor to our master bringing, alma mater, we love you. Alma mater, we love you, tenors. Alma mater, we love you. I'm expecting there to be a whole bunch of basses over here because I'm not seeing, hearing a lot of tenor over there. Okay, so now, the lowest part, the lowest part, the bass part, which is my part, okay? This is what I like to sing. It's the notes that have the stems going down, the very bottom line. Goshen College ever singing. Goshen College. But let's all sing it together. Everybody learn it. Everybody learn it in your own range. Ready and uh, go. Goshen College ever singing. My turn. To our motto will be true. Honor to our master bringing. Honor to our master bringing. Alma mater, we love you. And there's still a couple folks singing down the octave from there. Oh my goodness, that's impressive. So perhaps you like listening to country music. You like Luke Combs or Morgan Wallen, although he's a little bit more of a baritone, or perhaps you like listening to the late, great Johnny Cash. This is your part. This is your part. Basses with full voice. Here we go. Hmm, ready and go. You 
and sing that low note at the end, which I can't do because I'm a baritone. Now, let's all sing one of those parts, one of those parts, sitting at the front edge of your chair, okay? And then I'm going to invite you to be quiet afterwards. Be quiet afterwards. Just enjoy the sound as Philip comes up and shares. Here we go. Just, we're just doing the refrain. Here we go. Sitting tall. Ready and go. Motion of rage That makes me so happy. I hope it makes you feel happy too inside. All right, we welcome Philip to the podium. I'm Philip Gullner, I teach history here and I am the local Amish representative. No, of course not, but in a way this is where it starts because I did not grow up Amish or Mennonite. I didn't even know that Amish and Mennonites were actual people before I moved to the US from Germany and Austria, where I'm from. This scholarly beard started as a hipster experiment when I was an undergrad, and it's not my fault that I now live near the third largest Amish settlement in the world and teach at a interestingly Christian college that's affiliated with the Mennonite church. It's the fault of the singing, at least in part. When I became Mennonite, so when I was checking out Mennonite, <laughs> when I was checking out Mennonite congregations during graduate school, singing in harmony was a big draw for me, almost to the point where I could ignore the text that was actually being sung, because I've always loved singing or chanting with other people, and Mennonites did it so well, it just felt homey to me. You see, I grew up supporting my local soccer club in Austria. I traveled home and to away games, and then I also followed an English club, still follow both. And there is something beautiful and powerful and hauntingly tribal when you get off the train at the train station in the city of the team that you're playing against that day and you yell at unexpecting strangers on the platform, something like, Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chimney, churu. We are the bastards in claret and blue. And the, the venerable citizens of the city look back at you, the strange, just for example. I'm not saying that I ever yelled that exact, but just for example. And there is also something beautiful, powerful, and hauntingly tribal to singing Goshen College, we love you at the beginning of school years or at commencement at graduation, when you see students that I've had the joy of walking with for four years, walk up that stage, get their diploma, and make their way out into the world. There's just one problem. I like music in many ways, but I didn't really receive any training in singing. And while my parents made me take piano lessons, I have a hard time still to look at a note on a page and sing it back to you right away. What I'm very good at, I think, is feeling my way into a harmony, even if not every note is actually on the page. And so when I'm in a setting like this, where we sing in four parts, I sometimes sing the fifth part in a four-part harmony, <laughs> and it actually may sound decent. I still do that sometimes today. I can kind of smush my way along the bass line, and as far as I know, Scott hasn't slapped me yet. <laughs> the other problem is there are simply songs that I don't like that much, including some in that great new purple book that's in your benches. Some have a text that makes me feel like I'm kind of being emotionally manipulated a little bit at that moment. Some have a melody that is kind of meh, and I don't really enjoy singing, and I kind of drag my feet. You might feel the same sometimes as well. Actually, especially if you're a first year student here, you were recruited here because you were told this is a nice place with nice people, or you can play your sports here, or we have the program that you thought in high school is gonna land you a job that you will like, and then here you are, 
orientation week, first weeks of classes, chapel, people throw the M word around, and there's a songbook to pick up and do stuff with, and you wonder, has anybody told me that this place is kind of peculiar in that way? You've been told that everything connects here, and it turns out not everything does right away. And some people and things and tunes connect better or quicker than others. Every college has an alma mater like this, kind of an anthem. And a lot of these alma maters have something in there about singing. To thy name will sing thy praises. Auburn University, Alabama. Through our college days, singing loud from hearts that love thee. William and Mary, Virginia. Goshen College, ever singing, to our mater will be true, that's us. All these lyrics were written around the same time, so late 19th, early 20th century. So the fact that we have singing actually in the song that we sing, while we sing about singing, isn't that special. Except that at the time, uh, Mennonites were very constricted in what instruments they could use, so they placed a special premium on singing. But nevertheless, at every college that has a song like this, ideally, the song is a bit of a, a leveler, a musical leveler, an equalizer. It doesn't, our particular alma mater, just say, sing well, or sing this, or sing that, or like this, or like that. It just says, sing, Goshen. Ever sing. When your soccer team is down zero to three, or something like that, especially to a team that's much richer and more successful than yours, a way to at least claim the moral victory is chanting at the other team's fans, sing when you're winning, you only sing when you're winning. Right? So you, you glory hunters, you glory hunters, we, you see, we sing regardless, even when it's not glamorous. We're ever singing. So, read notes, cool, don't read notes so much, and want to join me in the fifth part of a four-part harmony, also cool. Unsure if your life song syncs with the songs here at GC yet? Layer it on top of the tunes that you encounter here and see how it sounds. See how they sync if they help you make your own tune actually sound a little better in harmony. Whatever comes out of the mishmash, chances are that it too will be beautiful and powerful and hauntingly tribal. Come on, Goshen. Thank you, Philip. I invite you all to stand and sing the full alma mater of Goshen College.
Good morning, I'm Asia Atkins. Um, I am a second year music major from Goshen, and I'm glad to be here today to talk a little bit about myself and why I sing. Why do I sing? This is not a very easy question to answer due to it coming with ease, being part of my life since I was in the womb, literally, but I, I don't really remember that. So I'll start from when I was four. I grew up in a very musical household. My mom played violin, sang, and she even used to be in a band in her college years. And she's kept the music passion within her since then. My siblings and I would always have the privilege of getting to sing together all the time while growing up. My mom and I would sing Adele, Pentatonix, and Beyonce together. And Halo is my favorite to sing personally. Like I said, my mom grew up playing the violin, which inspired me to pick up an instrument also. I also chose the violin. <laughs> I fell in love with learning the instrument, though. I would practice hours on end every single day, and it wasn't super painful for my family to listen to. Or maybe it was, and they loved me too much to say it, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> I not only loved playing the instrument, but I felt connected to so many other beginners in the orchestra. It was a place where I made friends pretty easily, and the directors saw the spark in me. We were all learning together, and we were having a lot of fun doing it. I continued with orchestra throughout high school, and during this time, my family was struggling to find housing. So for us, that meant we lived in a hotel. I had no privacy sharing a room with my three siblings and my mom for years. I learned very quickly that the strategy to feel isolation when I needed it most was through my headphones. I would listen to music all the time. I would listen to indie, pop, and alternative music in my bed that I shared with my sister. And at school, I would make the music in orchestra and choir. In these settings where I made the music with other people, I fell in love with performing for the purpose of making an audience feel something. Music holds such a powerful ability to heal through emotions. When I listen to music, it serves as a form of emotional release for me. Whether I just listen to or sing along to my favorite artists, it always feels cathartic and gives me a place to express my emotions. In high school, I knew this is what I wanted my life to be filled with. Why do I sing? I sing because being able to communicate with other humans through a language of sound and feeling is so extremely powerful. So if you guys would all turn in your Voices Together hymnals to page 389, I will lead together. I chose this song because it kind of fits the theme of why I was talking today about bringing people together through song and emotions. Thank you. I will sing with you, my family. Will you sing with me?
Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Victor. I am a third year music major here from Venezuela. Um, and I, spent, I have spent the last five years pretty much stuck here in Goshen. <laughs> um, just as a trigger warning, my story has a brief mentions of bullying, homophobia, thoughts of suicide, and self-harm. So if this triggers you in any way, please take care of yourself first. And if you need to take a minute, dissociate, leave the room. I will not be offended if you choose to do so. Why I sing? This is a question that, in opposing to Asia's story, for mine is a lot more darker. I was about 11 years old when I realized that I had somewhat of a musical ear. I was able to start any song in the right key on the spot, just dead on the right starting note, and not go terribly flat throughout the song I'd sing. My friends back home in Venezuela would tell me I actually sounded pretty decent, and I definitely should keep practicing to get better at it. However, I grew up in a household that believed that complete opposite, and just wasn't supportive of my choices of wanting to sing growing up. They'd say stuff like, you need to stop screaming so much. You're not made to be a singer. Your voice isn't for a stringer. You're not strong enough to sing. It wasn't until I turned 14 that I started songwriting, and then songwriting opened up a new door for me when it came to expressing myself and finding ways to explain feelings that I couldn't do by simply just talking. One time in high school in Venezuela, some of my songs got out into my classroom, what I got ridiculed for, and just made me feel like a complete failure. 
And I remember the entire classroom yelling at me and booing at me because they thought I had written songs about guys. So as an example, if I was standing right there in front of you guys and all of you were booing at me, that's where I went through when people found out that I was writing songs. Though I thought about just quitting and settle for what I was asked to become a lawyer, architect, engineer, my stubborn little 14-year-old self just kept trying and trying to get better at singing. At 15, when I moved to the United States, I naively thought that I was gonna be able to fulfill this fantasy of becoming a singer and perform and all of that. And then I faced another monster, racism. It hit me in the face. Kids would laugh at me for my accent or because I couldn't manage to hold a conversation through text. And having a white choir director tell me that I couldn't be in their choir because they weren't looking for my kind of people to join their ensemble. All of this hit me like a train and you know, made me really doubt myself. And it wasn't until I moved to Goshen and went to Goshen High School where I would join my first choir under the conduction of Steve Snyder. And then when everything went on to bigger and better things. As someone who struggled with depression, I constantly had really bad thoughts of going through my head. And I would take that out of myself by self-harming. Having my arms covered in scars and nothing helped me feel better the way music did. Nothing helped me express out my emotions better than singing did. Absolutely nothing else. Flash forward, I'm a third year music major that does performing regularly and I would dare say that I'm kinda good at it. Um, I sing because music has saved my life many times and it continues to fulfill me at every level. And those who have such a burning passion will know what I'm talking about. That one thing that if you all of a sudden were not able to do, you had no idea what you would do with your life. Not even in the slightest way, you think you would collapse. I sing because it makes me the happiest man alive. And most importantly, it taught me something very crucial about myself. All those people who told me that I wasn't gonna make it, it taught me that if you tell me I'm not good enough to pursue something I love, I will show you that I am capable and that I will do it better than you could ever imagine. I sing because they told me I couldn't, so I did. And on that note, <laughs> um, if you could turn to Voices Together, again, the Purple Book, to number 604, we will be singing the hymn, Nada Te Turbe. And before I do so, I would like to teach you how to pronounce these words if you do not speak Spanish. Um, so, repeat after me. Nada te turbe. Nada te espante. Quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante. Solo Dios basta. I chose this hymn because it I am not religious, but I feel like this, um, this hymn really showed you got what you got to do whatever you want, which reflects to my story. So, yeah. Um, could you roll the pitches?
A thank you to all who participated today. A thank you to our tech people, to our ASL people. Why do we sing? Why do birds sing? Why do whales sing? Why do dolphins sing? Because they can. And they do. And we get really excited when we hear things sing, including us. We started all of us singing when we were little. Your parents will talk about you dancing and singing about. At Goshen College, we wish to rekindle the joy of song. Parables are going to conclude with one piece. We know we've gone over here a little bit in time, so if you have to leave, leave kind of quietly. If you don't have to leave because you don't have a class, listen to Glory Glory. Have a wonderful, ever singing day. Better. I feel better.